Sabaha everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to do an initial impressions of the brand new TCL 10L and 10 Pro. Both of these devices uh, were basically announced back at CES 2020, but we really didn't know when they were coming out. I finally have both of them in the house. I'm going to share with you guys, obviously, some of the main specifications, some of the cool things about them. But of course, rounding it up with my impressions of how these will actually perform in the market right now. This is TK and this is my initial impressions of the brand new TCL 10L and 10 Pro. Let's check it out. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. So here we have both the 10 Pro and the 10L, and we're obviously gonna talk a little bit more about the cameras that we have here as both of them support quadruple camera setups on the back. Uh, but overall, the unboxing experience for both of these devices is very similar. Uh, both of them do include free cases that are included from TCL, so it's display greatness, uh, that are basically clear cases that you're able to use so you can protect your new device. Uh, but other than that, we have basically just a SIM removal tool. This is the same box on both devices that you'll be able to get as far as the actual cases in there. Uh, the difference essentially here is that this one includes a USB-C to USB type A. Again, both of the devices have those, but where the charging technology is a little bit different, quick charge 3.0 on the Pro and of course, fast charging on the basically the 10L. Also, the battery capacity is slightly different, 4,000 milliamp battery as opposed to 4,500 milliamp battery. Um, even though the phone is slightly smaller than this, it actually does have a bigger battery on it. So as far as the camera configurations that we have here, again, both having quadruple camera setups. Um, on the left here, we have a 64 megapixel primary shooter, a 16 megapixel wide angle lens, and then of course, a five megapixel uh, macro lens. And the last one is a two megapixel sensor that's giving us assistance whenever we wanna be able to shoot low light video. And obviously we'll cover that in a little bit more later on. As far as the 10L, we have a 48 megapixel primary shooter as well as an eight megapixel ultra wide and then a two megapixel depth sensor as well as a two megapixel macro lens. Now, both of these devices are supporting dual tone LED flash on both sides. We have a fingerprint sensor present on the 10L on the back where we have an in-display fingerprint sensor present here on the 10 Pro. Uh, one thing that I do want to mention to you guys is that actually if you look at the actual camera setup, it is slightly raised here on the 10L as opposed to where it's pretty much just flush entirely with the actual 10 Pro. The other thing also is uh, you do actually kind of feel where the uh, camera, the LED flash here is sitting in there. Uh, last but not least, of course, as far as the actual backing, neither one of them will support wireless charging. So 4,500 uh, milliamp battery here supported by quick charge 3.0, fast charging 4,000 milliamp battery here on the 10L. Looking over on the left side, we have an action button on both of these devices that we're able to configure by a single press, double press, or a long press, and of course you can customize them to your part's content. Uh, we have the SIM tray that's capable of giving us one SIM card as well as one SD card. Uh, now the internal storage on the 10L is 64 gigs with 6 gigs of RAM, and the 10 Pro has 128 gigs of internal storage. Now both of them will support SD card expansion, so where this tray is sitting here at the bottom, uh, on the side here, it's actually present at the bottom. Um, other than that, pretty much the same thing, very good design. You'll notice also that the display here is a flat display on the 10L, so if you prefer that for, uh, that aesthetic, this is gonna definitely work a lot better. And of course, we have a curved display here on the 10 Pro. Um, looking at it at the top, both of them support the three and a half millimeter headphone jack, which is really good. We also have an IR blaster to be able to control our TVs here on the 10 Pro, where we don't have one on the 10L. And of course, one of the microphones for audio uh, capture when we're taking uh, videos on this device. Now, if we switch them to the right side, we'll pretty much get the same experience, volume rocker and power button. Double pressing the power button will launch the camera, which is really functional for us. And then lastly, on the bottom, uh, we have access to uh, where it looks like kind of like stereo speakers, but essentially it's really one of the microphones for the, uh, the actual camera. And of course, this is a single firing mono speaker on both the Pro and the 10L. Uh, now, obviously we have the USB-C charging cables here, uh, well, connectors for data transfer and charging, as well as audio if you'd like to use USB-C headsets. Uh, and of course, here is where the SIM tray and the uh, SD card is spread present as well. Now, when we look at the actual displays, uh, we're looking obviously at a 6.47 inch display that's curved on both edges. We also look here at 6.53 inch, so roughly both about a 6.5 inch display, although the footprint on the actual devices are definitely slightly off. So you'll notice that the 10L is physically a little bit bigger, also supporting that flat display. Uh, and I mentioned to you guys, both of them have front facing camera. Now the 10L has the camera present on the top left where the 10 Pro is present at the top in the middle. As far as the actual sensors, we have a 16 megapixel sensor that's present in the front with a uh, 24 megapixel sensor on the front here on the 10 Pro. Now, both of them are running Android 10.0 out of the box. You'll notice right there, Android 10, uh, where the difference is obviously, in, since we're running here, the model number here on the 10L is the uh, T770B and the T799B is the Pro. Uh, the CPU processor is the 675 here as opposed to the 665, so a slight difference in generation, but definitely there's some optimizations done here for the 10 Pro. 
the display resolution on both is 1080p at 2340, so the resolution pretty much matched. And again, as I mentioned, the 48, an 8, a 2, and a 2, and a 16 on the front. 64, 16, 5, and a 2, that's the video sensor to be able to get the low light imagery, and the 24 on the front. Uh, both of them are supporting 6 gigs of RAM, but again, 64 gigs on the 10L, 128 gigs on the 10 Pro. Both running Android 10.0, and again, 4,000 milliamp battery to a 4,500 milliamp battery, and both of them running in the March 1st, 2020 security patch update. You can imagine both of them will support, obviously, the Android gesture, so we're able to swipe up in the middle, and of course, clear all. I also have the dark mode present on both that you're able to activate, so we can open up the notification shade. Uh, most of the toggles are pretty much similar, Wi-Fi, cellular data. I am connected to LTE here on T-Mobile. Let's go ahead and turn off the Wi-Fi. And again, both of them support the same band, so you should be able to use this on T-Mobile without any problems. Um, as far as the actual configuration with the settings, everything is pretty much configurable. Again, NFC, we have screenshots ability. Uh, we do have built-in screen recorder on both of them with uh, obviously the ability of turning on hotspot data saver. And of course, you can edit with even one-handed mode supported on both devices. So we'll go ahead and click OK here. And of course, you can swap it between one side or another in case you do want to be able to access the device. Of course, so touching away somewhere uh, away from it will work fine. Swiping down from the top automatically opens up the notification shade, which is the best way to do this. Swiping up from the bottom takes us directly into the app drawer. And of course, we can do a search. Uh, the app drawer itself is actually categorized, which is really nice. So we have the recent app bottom, uh, right out of the box. Then, of course, we have communication. And you can able to actually set them up and configure them depending as you want. Uh, both of them are supporting, again, a 1080p panel running at 60 hertz. So we're not looking at any high refresh rate uh, as far as devices. As I mentioned to you guys at the beginning, we have this little function key here that we're able to configure. So there's a button for it to configure it. It's also present in the settings. Uh, you're able to configure it into three different set type of connections. So obviously single press, you can launch the assistant. So for me, here you go. I can launch the assistant. It'll launch right away. And you can configure it to be whatever you'd like. There's a whole bunch of different things. You can go in there, opening galleries, um, even up to the point or even open up the notification set, stop and uh, start recording do not disturb uh, screen on and off of course take a note clear off notifications a whole bunch of things that you can configure for me i like to do the configuration for both of them in the same way uh, single press will launch the assistant double press will basically turn on the flashlight so let's go ahead and do that so to turn it on and you notice both flashlights turn on and they're both very very bright um, and again lastly is the long press will take a screenshot so let's go ahead and do a screenshot real quick and it does grab the image and you're able to do basically uh sorry go ahead and got it right there and one more <laughs> Got it. And then, of course, you're able to edit it, take long shots, and of course, or share it straight directly from the actual UI. Uh, again, all of those things are really, really nice. And what it also kind of jumps into the next level as far as the actual configuration is the NXT vision, which is something that you definitely want to turn on when you first get this device. As far as the colors uh, profile, you're definitely able to customize that, but you're also able to turn on the extra brightness for the display in case you when you go outside. SDR to HDR upscaling to be able to get the obviously the awesome uh, color representation that we have on these devices. And you can kind of see they're both very similar in as far as the actual UI. Now, one thing the 10 Pro has that the 10L does not have is that side launcher that we have access to here. And you're able to basically customize it by adding additional application, adding your contacts, as well as using the actual device to be able to use it as a ruler. And of course, it does actually kind of provide more things present. Uh, you're able to jump into the settings and of course, edit the tabs themselves, get, you know, obviously order, change the order, edit uh, basically the edge position where it's present right there. You can change it as well as, of course, continuing scrolling and disable an edge when you're using full screen applications. Very nice. Again, present here on the 10 Pro. So what we have here on the 10L is the Snapdragon 665 and of course the Snapdragon 675. There is a slight difference in performance and I just want to give you guys a quick benchmark. This is just Geekbench. Uh, the score, as you can see, obviously a better performance that we have here present over the 10L uh, it, between obviously from the single core all the way to the multi-core. Uh, both of the processors are considered to be mid-range processors, so you're not going to be obviously getting obviously the Snapdragon 8 series type of uh, experience, but definitely for the price point and of course for extended battery life, especially with the 1080p panel, you're definitely going to enjoy that and have obviously long battery life. Uh, dark mode, of course, will always help us to be able to save battery as well. Um, as far as internal storage, I got that question last week when I was doing my live stream. I'll go ahead and open up the history information for you guys. I ran a couple of benchmarks here and you can kind of see real quick. Overall, uh, the 10 Pro does have a little bit faster read as far as the actual internal storage, but unfortunately a little bit lower on as far as uh, basically writing by comparison to the actual 10L. I'm not sure if this is something maybe due to the fact that this application is just maybe not tuned for it. But other than that, I mean, realistically, 
4K 30, pre, uh, 30 frames per second on the back facing sensor, and of course 1080p 30 on the front facing sensor. Uh, again, stereo speakers are not here, but for the overall experience, sub $500, 4G LTE in the US unlocked. I think this is definitely gonna be really, really good as that's what both of these devices are. This is going to be a quick audio test on both the 10L and the 10 Pro, both of them supporting a single bottom firing speaker. So we're gonna be testing that out. Of course, keep in mind you have a basically Bluetooth as well as the fact that we have a full size three and a half millimeter headphone jack at the top. Uh, we'll go ahead and start off uh, with both sitting at 100%. So let's we'll go ahead and hit volume level all the way at 100%. And we'll go ahead and start off with the 10L and then we'll jump over to the 10 Pro. So first thing, obviously, uh, the sound definitely does go pretty loud. Uh, unfortunately, it's not very bassy. It sounds a little bit tinny at 100%, but again, for voice calls, this should not have any problems. Let's go ahead and start off on the 10 Pro. So definitely a lot bassier, definitely a richer sound present here on the 10 Pro. So the upgrade from the 10L to the 10 Pro obviously is significant as you can hear definitely from the single bottom firing speaker. But one thing you definitely wanna keep in mind, again, the price point that both of these devices are gonna be comparable is definitely gonna provide you great bang for the buck. As far as the camera application, again, we have the ability of using the wide angle lens and the, uh, obviously the telephoto lens. I'll go ahead and play some pictures for you guys right now. Uh, overall, I'm showing you guys both images from the 10L and the 10 Pro just to kind of see the experience that you're able to get as far as using the standard focal length or even using the wide angle lens. Um, you should be able to get pretty good images either way. I think the sensors that we have here is the 48 megapixel sensor and the 64 megapixel sensor are gonna give you a really good experience. Uh, one thing though I wanna mention is that the 10 Pro does have this additional feature that gives you kind of a preview whenever you wanna be able to see how low light images, ultra wide and obviously the standard focal length look like. Well, obviously just more of a preview functionality. I really like it and it's only present on the 10, uh, 10 Pro, not present on the 10L. As far as the video resolution here, the maximum resolution be able to get on the back sensor is going to be 4k at 30 frames per second and 1080p on the front facing sensor obviously we'll be able to take portrait imagery on both on the front facing and the back facing sensor uh, super night is only present on the pro as well as here we have a super macro since we have a secondary macro set lens and we obviously have a pro mode that's present on both devices to be able to obviously take a little bit more control over how our images come out let's do a quick sample of the back facing back facing sensors here obviously at 4k 30 frames per second this is a quick comparison of the back main sensors that we have here on both the 10L and the 10 Pro. Both capable of shooting 4K 30 frames per second. And as you probably noticed right now, I'm switching between both of them. Meaning you're going to be able to see what the benefit obviously of having 4K 30 on a very budget friendly device. As far as gaming on this device, uh, I did test it out real quick with PUBG. And of course, uh, the maximum resolution on the Pro is going to be ultra smooth as well as the overlook obviously go to different uh, colorful here. And of course, on the 10L is going to be high and smooth. That's just more of an experience. And as I'm showing you right now, gameplay obviously is not going to disappoint on either one of these devices. Just be aware as far as what's the maximum resolution you're able to get. Both of them support a fingerprint sensor. This one is on the back. The other one in here is built into the device. And of course, it's face unlocking on both of them and it works pretty fast. Um, I do want to share with you guys real quick. The last thing is the advanced mode on, or at least the advanced menu on both the 10 Pro and the 10L. Uh, as you know, system navigation, that's how I was able to basically turn on the navigation gestures here. App Cloner to be able to turn on different applications for multiple accounts. Edge Bar is only present on the actual Pro because that's the only one that does support it. So you're able to configure it. But the rest of them, screen recording, gestures, uh, one hand, mode obviously as I showed you guys before gaming mode is also very nice to be able to get the best performance that you can and you're able to basically go in here and if you don't want to have the act uh, the uh, basically the smart key function you can actually disable it game turbo is not turned on by default but you are able to turn it on and of course get the best capabilities uh, of the device itself uh, of course then we have driving mode and of course smart key which is that function to be able to configure it again single press double press and triple press so the overall impressions of the 10L and the 10 Pro, I think they both offer uh, great features for the price point that they're going to be targeted at. Uh, the 10L, from what I'm understanding, is it's gonna be somewhere around 250 bucks. So for that price point, I feel like this is a great opportunity for TCL to make a really good budget-friendly device. Uh, you're looking at a 48 megapixel sensor with a 16 megapixel front-facing camera, 4K 30 frames per second. Um, overall performance on the device is actually pretty comparable over you know, the last couple of days I've been able to play with it. The 10 Pro is gonna be sub $500. I don't 
don't know specifically how much that's going to be but again you're getting that curved display the amoled panel the always on display the edge panel of course as well as some of the other optimizations that both of these devices are benefiting from tcl's technology tcl has always been great bang for the buck type of a tv you know for their 4k tvs their roku tvs are really well known here in the us as far as what they're able to give you for a good price as well as the quality that they're able to provide so that's what i'm looking forward to seeing what the actual devices here are able to provide us as you saw with the cameras and the video they're quite capable and they're pretty comparable as far as the processors again qualcomm processors that are in the 600 series going to be low power as far as consumption by comparison to the 865 line or the 8 line and of course we have the 4000 and the 4500 million battery uh, fast charging on the pro and of course uh, well a quick charge 3.0 on the pro and fast charging on the uh, 10l uh, let me know in the comments below what would you like me to focus on uh, i think having a three and a half millimeter headphone jack on the device and in, in 2020 is by any means is going to be definitely a great plus but it's the fact that this is a company that is known for making great displays so obviously the display the content consumption on this needs to be top notch uh, both of them are running at 1080p so definitely looking forward to seeing how those perform uh, as i get ready to be able to put together the review for each one of these guys uh, again, like and subscribe as usual. Thank you very much for the support. Thank you to TCL for allowing me to have these devices to be able to share with you guys my opinions. But other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video and I hope you're doing well.